This is Yixin from Monash University, and I will give a presentation on our recent paper, the unsupervised growth out of distribution detection method. Yeah. And so let's start with the background of our work. And so we know that graph structural data is everywhere in our life, from social network to traffic network. And very recently, the graph neural network become a mainstream solution for deep learning on graph structural data. And actually, in practice, GNN can learn informative presentation from node or graph. And so it can be applied to various of downstream tasks, such as a link prediction or graph classification. And however, most of the current GNN often assume that the training and testing data uh, are follow the same distribution, which is not a practical assumption in real world scenario, actually. So here we use an example to illustrate this. So let's consider a graph classification model that discriminates the input organic compound in its acid or not acid. So in the training phase, the training data are sampled from the distribution of the organic compound and the GN just learn to discriminate the input organic compound is SA or not with the guidance of these training samples. Yeah, that's how we work uh, usually. And in the testing phase, the, test the testing data is often sampled from the same distribution. Uh, that's, it, that's it to say here, we have three organic compounds from the testing uh, distribution and the model can just classify them into the into SA correctly. So if the model is, uh, if the model is powerful enough, so for this uh, testing data, we can just uh, regard them as the in-distribution testing sample because they are sample from the same, same, sample uh, same sample distribution as the same one with the training set, right? So, however, in real world scenario, the testing data is not always from the same distribution. So let's consider such a situation. So the testing data is sample from another distribution, such as the distribution of compound, which is a larger distribution from the organic one. So in this case, the testing data cannot, on, cannot only be the organic compound, but also can be the inorganic compounds. So at the same time, we have a out of distribution testing data, uh, or say OD testing data, which is an uh, inorganic compound. So if we just input this, uh, this inorganic sample into the model, so how will the model react? And in actually it would answer it's acid or not, but it must be a, it, it must be a, a noisy answer because the judgment uh, standard from the or organic and inorganic compounds may be different. And the model know less about the inorganic samples. And at that time, we just hope the our model is capable to do such a react. And it can say this is an out of distribution sample and rather than just provide a wrong answer. And such an awareness of all these samples is the learning target of out of distribution detection problem and what we mainly investigate on. So here our distribution detection is to determine whether an input is ID data or OD sample and enable the model to take a uh, Take, take, a, take care of this uh, all of distribution samples. And in OD detection, we like to train the OD detection model with a group of ID samples. And at that time, the model is expected to understand these sample are ID data. And then in the testing phase, we have the sample from the original distribution, uh, which, uh, which is the ID samples, and as well as the samples from other distribution or say the OD distribution. And here, our learn target is to discriminate the OD samples and the, the ID sample correctly. And in this work, we just focus on the graph level OD detection problem on graph structural data. And actually, there are many OD detection works for image or test data in recent years. However, for graph data, there is a unique change that is the OD graphs may violate the latent pattern of ID graphs in different scales. And for instance, the here we have a series of ID graph GA to GD. And for all the sample, we can find that the GS just violate the node level rule, which has a minor variation on a single node. And GY just violate the graph level rule, which uh, where the full graph redundant connection is included in this graph. And the GZ just uh, violate the group level rule. So it, it is a cluster uh, the 80 samples 
uh, considering the ID distribution. And so the challenge is how to capture the share pattern in different level. And here we, we just consider a hierarchical graph contrasted learning method to address this challenge. And so I've introduced the proposed model in detail uh, in the following. So our proposed model is named GoodD, uh, which is uh, our, ba our base idea is to learn the interactive ID distribution and measure the OD scores for different input by performing the hierarchical graph contrast learning. And so as the first step of the contrast learning, we often just use the data documentation to generate two different views for contrast. And for the conventional contrast learning method, they often use some uh, random data perturbation for data augmentation. However, such, pres such perturbation can just create and design all the graphs from the original ID graphs as the example show on here. So the GS is the out of distribution sample GS can just generate from the in distribution data GA with feature mod modification and edge modification. So we think that the random data perturbation is not work for our OOD detection scenario. And so to address this issue, we just propose to use the perturbation-free augmentation in our proposed framework. Here, we just build two different view, a uh, feature view and structure view. And the feature view is equal to the original graph data with the no feature and the, the original density matrix. And for the structure view, we just replace the feature with the no level structure encoding which can better emphasize the structural information for graph data. Here, we just use the random walk diffusion based and a no degrees based information to generate the structural encoding here. And then we just encode the graph data into the, deep, into the representation or embedding in at different level. Here, we use the GIN as our encoder to generate the no level embedding first. And then we just use a sampling to generate the graph level embedding for each graph sample. And after that, let's come to the hierarchical contrast learning part. And first, we just conduct the node level contrast here. And here, we just first project the node embedding into a latent space for contrastive learning, and then use a node level contrastive loss uh, in an info NCE manner to maximize the agreement between the corresponding node from two different views. And the second contrastive term is the graph level contrast learning. So we just first uh, similarly uh, predict the predict it with the MLP layer, and then to use the inference loss to maximize the graph level embedding in two different views. And here the here the graph representation of other graphs in the same batch can serve as the negative sample in the contrastive loss. And finally, we have a group level contrast. Here we just use a taming algorithm to allocate the cluster for each sem uh, for each sample, and then the prototype is computed by the average embedding of the cluster. And finally, we just use a group level contrast loss to make sure that each graph has a larger agreement between its corresponding prototype, uh, just as the formula shown in in this part. And and with this with the contrast learning in the three levels, now we have the overall framework of GoD. So we can just simply uh, add the three loss term together into a final training objective to train the model. And for the OD scoring part, uh, we can we can compute the score according to the arrow. So here for node and graph level, we just directly use the contrastive arrow in two level as the OD score. And for group level, we just directly use the similarity of prototype and the and the, uh, the similarity of prototype and the group space embedding as the OD score. And similarly, by adding these three scores together, we can have a simple strategy to get the OD score finally. But however, this simple strategy has a short shortage, is that it is it just ignores the diversity, diverse sensitivities at different levels which may result in suboptimal solution. So to better train the model and compute the OD score, we just propose an adaptive training and scoring strategy here. And here for model training, we can add a flexible uh, coefficient, to, coefficient to each loss term. And here the sigma is the standard deviation of the corresponding contrastive error, and alpha is the hyperparameter that control the strength of self-adaptiveness. 
And for scoring, we use the mean value and the standard deviation of errors to normalize the score of each level. And finally, we add them together. And yeah, that's all of our model. And for the experiment part, since we, we are the first to investigate the graph level OD detection problem, so we conduct a benchmark by collecting 10 pair of data sets from the TU data sets and OGB data set, which are two uh, common use uh, graph level data set. And for comparison, for comparison, we just consider three types of baseline for comparison, including the graph kernel wave detector, the graph characteristic learning wave detector, and the end-to-end -end methods. And we use AUC value to evaluate to evaluate the performance of the models. Yeah, and that is the experiment result on our benchmark. And here we can observe that our performance met, our performance methods outperform all baseline on a group of the data set and can achieve the runner up performance on the rest of the data set. And we can also find that the simple version uh, we, without the adaptive mechanism, uh, can also achieve a very competitive result. And we also conduct the experiments on anomaly detection tasks because uh, our, we find that our model can also perform well on the un anomaly detection task. And we find that even if the goodie is de designed for the OD detection, and it can also have a, a superior performance here. And here we also conduct a series of experiments to discuss the property of good D. And this is the application study to discuss the, the, the effectiveness of the three different level of contrastive loss. And this is a parameter study to discuss the selection of plus number K and the, the alpha for the self adaptiveness And we can find that our model can have a, can have a better can have a better performance uh, when when uh, when the this hyperparameter change uh change uh, sharply and here we just here we also have a visualization experiment but i can i think that due to the time uh, the the concern of time i i will not introduce very deeply and so to conclude today's presentation we just summarize three main contribution of our paper so first, we just propose uh, to investigate a new research problem, the graph level out of distribution detection problem. And second, uh, we propose a method term good D to solve this problem. We have three core design, and we list here the hierarchical contrastive learning, the presentation free augmentation, and the adaptive training and scoring. And we just uh, for evaluation, we just uh, contrast a new benchmark for this OD learn uh, detection task. And our method just achieved a very competitive performance here. And the source code is available now at GitHub. Yeah, and that's all of today's pre presentation and thanks for your listening.